So air has a certain degree of viscosity. Viscosity is just basically the thickness of a fluid. So fluids flow in layers and viscosity is basically the friction between those layers. So the more viscous something is, the more it resists free flow. So things that are very examples of fluids that are very viscous would be like oil or honey or grease. They resist free flow. They're very viscous. The less viscous something is, the more freely it flows. So no surface on earth is perfectly smooth. If you look close at anything, we'll be able to see these tiny little imperfections in the surface of the skin. So as the air flows past the airfoil, the air sort of, uh, the, the layer of air that flows just above the surface gets caught in these tiny little imperfections and sort of stagnates here. Now, because of the viscosity of the air, because of the friction between layers, this area of stagnation right here sort of drags down the layer that's flowing right above it. And then again, because of the viscosity of the air, the layer that flows just above that one gets dragged down a little bit and slowed down a little bit and so on and so on until we have smooth laminar flow. So we have this area of stagnation that gradually increases to free, uh, gradually increases to smooth laminar flow. That area of stagnation is called the boundary layer. Now, because of the viscosity of the air, because of the friction sort of dragging the airflow downward, the friction of this slower moving stagnating air, the air follows the boundary layer. Now, the boundary layer is usually very thin. It's usually no thicker than like the thickness of a credit card, but it can change. And the important thing to understand here is that because air follows the boundary layer, the boundary layer is what forms the effective shape of the airfoil. Now, if you're with me so far, you're thinking, okay, well then it doesn't really matter what the actual physical shape of the airfoil is. All that matters is the shape of the boundary layer because that's what the smooth laminar flow is going to follow. And that's correct. Smooth laminar flow is what we need to produce a force. 